All right, welcome to tonight's spinal workshop on discussing spinal hygiene around flexibility and mobility. And, uh, you know, the second Tuesday of each month, Dr. Kristen and I are really focusing on spinal hygiene and how can we make sure we're getting healthy motion, not just into our spine, also into the joints of our body. And that's where uh, tonight's conversation um, really falls into is how can we make sure we're maintaining healthy flexibility and healthy mobility for life? Uh, movement is life. If you've ever heard me ask this question in the office, I mean, what happens to water below 32 degrees? It freezes. It, it freezes, right? So why in the middle of, you know, I don't know, a snowstorm, you come across a river and it's, let's say 10 degrees, but the river's still flowing. There's, it's not iced over. Why is that? In motion, exactly. Movement is life. As soon as you stop moving, you move away from that life. And so tonight we're talking about how can we move the spine and why is it important? So I have to apologize. This is probably the most boring PowerPoint I've put together in terms of looks, okay? Not a lot on here to look at, lots of words. But uh, let's define mobility and flexibility because they are different. So mobility, I want you to think about that mobility as the quality or state of being mobile, mobile or movable, the ability or capacity to move, okay? So when you're thinking about mobility in terms of the human body, the ability to move naturally with strength through your ideal range of motion. So mobility within the cervical spine, we know that um, the average range of motion that we should see for somebody who goes into rotation is 80 degrees, okay? So we want to be able to see that range of motion is going into its full range of motion, but the spine doesn't only rotate, it laterally bends. So our spine should bend at, 45 degrees, both sides. And into flexion, it should go 60 degrees and into extension, 75, okay? So when we're talking about mobility, it's that joint going through all of its ranges of motion optimally. There's no restriction. And just like I just took the neck, we have the same in the shoulder, we have the same in the hip, we have in the elbow, wherever there's a joint, the joint has its normal ranges of motion. So, um, mobility is a cornerstone for a healthy body. The lesser mobility leads to instability, which decreases movements. Without proper movements, it's difficult to build strength, power, and endurance. Okay. So think about mobility as dynamic versus flexibility. Now, flexibility is looking at within your connective tissues. That's an umbrella term for your muscles, your ligaments, and your tendons. Okay. Muscles attached to bone through ligament, or excuse me, through tendons. So at the end of a muscle is a tendon and that tendon attaches to a bone. A ligament attaches bone from bone, but it's looking at that connective tissue's ability to temporarily elongate. So I want you to think about it like finger traps, those Chinese finger traps, you know? When you put your fingers in them, you're like pulling out. It's not changing the amount of material within the finger traps, it's it's actually just contracting it and elongating it temporarily, okay? So um, we need to be able to take our tissues through um, elongating it. So we need that flexibility to maintain health um, and to allow and support the mobility. So taking the joint through its proper range of motion um, in a healthy way, if that makes sense, okay? So um, what I'd like to do is I have some pictures here of some really great mobility movements uh, that I did in the office and we're going to critique my mobility, okay? And just because this is my starting point doesn't mean that I shouldn't or can't do them, okay? But these are great motions. I've um, specified some great mobility motions for the hips, the shoulder, the thoracic spine, and your ankles, okay? And before I even go there, 
I just want to remind you that <laughs> that your spine, your body is meant to move. So you should always be taking your spine through its ranges of motion. And I feel like every time I do a spinal hygiene workshop, I say, do your spinal ranges of motion, period. I want you to think that about your spinal ranges of motion as priming your spine, preparing your spine to do mobility movements, stretching and flexibility work, uh, and working out. So while I'm focusing on, you know, mobility motions here, I want you to think about you've already done your ranges of motion for your spine. You've already primed your spine to live life in the way it's meant to live. Okay. And I'm talking about spinal ranges of motion is your cervical rotations, bends, flexion, extension into your thoracic, you know, flexion, extension into lumbar. So low back. So doing all of those spinal ranges of motion. And your goal should be to get 50 of those in a day total. So maybe you start with 20, 20, and 10. But beyond that, okay, mobility. So this is a really great mobility movement for your hips, okay? So it works your hips in external rotation on, a, on the front leg and internal rotation on the back leg. Now, as you can see, as I'm laying here, so I'm transitioning from, if you look at the middle picture, I've uh, rotated those legs to go to the 90 in the opposite way, okay? So you're 90, if you're watching me here, and then you're 90. That's what is happening here. Now it should be 90, 90. Look at, look at the far left. Do you see my back leg? It's kicking back, right? Mm -hmm. So if I were to do this again and set up in this posture, I would pull that back leg and see, can I do 90? Now look at, I think the far right picture is the best picture to see. Look at my back leg and look how it's off the floor. So I'm restricted in my mobility there because I should be totally relaxed. I'm looking right here. I should be totally relaxed. Even look here. This is the same leg. Uh, let's see. This is right and right down. So I'm looking at you know, how well my leg is resting, my knee is resting on the floor. So this is looking at your hip mobility and motion that it's able to do in internal and external rotation as you're in a seated posture. And if you ever have somebody just take a picture of you or just do some checks, like if you're at home right now, or if you're here and you want to sit right on the floor, you're welcome to try it out. Um, get into a 90 and just go into your rotations back and forth. See how easy it is. Modified is like I'm doing. You've got your hands on the floor and you're just stabilizing yourself as you go right to left and rotate. Okay. Now, as a more, ch say it again. I always thought I was cheating if I put my hands there. Well, as a starting point, I think it's, it's okay to put your hands down. We won't call you a cheater. We'll just say you are... Uh, a little further along in your mobility journey um, if you don't need your hands on the floor, okay? Um, let's go to the next slide because, oops, I just want you to see here's another way to do it um, with your arms up, okay, and not using your hands to stabilize you motioning into that hip mobility, okay? And again, I would start by just, can you get into this posture? And if you need, I mean, and maybe you're just, your knees aren't even coming down all the way, but you're just starting to get those motions that way. Okay. Um, but this is a great hip mobility motion to do. Now, if we're going to the next one, shoulder mobility. I love this one. It's really, as I was taking pictures, I said, man, everyone should do these mobility movements. They feel great. Um, so what you do, I'm using a foam roller there. So I'm, my, I'm in a lunge posture and I'm squared up to the wall. And I'm using that outside knee is pushing that foam roller into the wall. 
Okay, so it's an isometric isometric stretch where I am actually doing some work here to push that foam roller in. And you start with, I don't have a, I, actually, I shouldn't have started. Your hand should be down by your right hip. So if I'm taking this one, my hand should be down by my right hip. And then I'm following my arm along the wall to go all the way back. Okay. And you're just going back and forth here. Now, you don't want motion through your torso. So as you're motioning here, here, I'll, I'll uh, make sure I get my annotation so you guys can see at home. So your hand should start down here. I'll give a big X. <laughs> and you're moving this way, right? Mm -hmm. Oh man, I have them in the wrong order. <laughs> Just notice my pictures. Oh. <laughs> so it should be one, two, and three here. Okay, but there should be no motion. I can tell by the way my hand is here, and I obviously did this, but there should be motion, there no motion of your torso this way. You should be able to maintain a balanced torso where you don't have to really, as this is coming around, you have to ugh, really work to get it around, right? So you may be, so that you don't get this motion this way, you may just decide just to go up and go back down here if you're using the wall. So I'm saying you might just be here if you can't get all the way around with a lot of torso motion. You don't want any rotation through your torso as you're doing that. Okay, so you might just go right here and then I would say you can back off the wall um, well, you can, actually, you can do it this way. You can back off the wall and just kind of work this way without having a foam roller at all. Mm -hmm. If you need to do a modified. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys can see me there. Sorry, this is a great one to be in the office. <laughs> um, so this would be ideal to really work into some great motion that you ha have shoulder-wise. If you don't feel like you have this motion in your shoulder, you can stand up so your right foot's in front back legs and back, you're working on, you know, the arm closest to the wall and you're just going to come off the wall and do the same motion. There's a little bit more generosity here with being able to move to get that shoulder around. Okay. But do a couple of these and this will feel really nice. Okay. okay. Let's clear my drawings. What's the purpose of the, um, the outer leg the knee holding that foam? Well, it's anchoring you. It ang okay. you're anchoring. It you. You're anchoring, so you're not getting, you want to focus on Just the shoulder here. Torso straight. Torso straight. You were working on shoulder mobility. Okay. You're not working on any other place. So you're trying to isolate the shoulder and take it through its range of motion. Okay. 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 Now let's go to this one. This one we love, cat-cow. We talk about this one all the time. But when you think about cat-cow, movements that happen within the body is you get flexion and extension of the spine. So you get flexion extension this way. You're getting shoulder retraction and protraction. So your shoulders are actually motioning. And then you get pelvic tilt. So you're getting pelvic tilt forward and backwards. So you're getting multiple motions through cat-cow. Mm -hmm. I love cat cow. And so this upper picture is just a neutral spine. This lower picture, you start with tucking your chin and then you're gonna round into a cat. You're rounding everything and then you're going to look up and go into cow where you're dropping your belly forward. Now you can do globally this motion or and I should say, you, as you are feeling better, you can focus on the segmental motion of moving, you know, from the neck to the mid back to the low back, and then the low back to the mid back to the neck, going from flexion extension and feeling that segmentally. So let me get my drawing out again. <clears throat> so first your chin tucks. And when I talk about segmental, I'm talking about 
chin tucks and you start to round. Okay, so you're gonna start rounding the back. It's gonna go up this way. And you wanna think about segmentally, each vertebra is rounding as you go down your spine. So you start up here and then you get down here. So it's think about it as a wave versus, I would say that's a, um, a fine-tuned cat-cow versus you get just really thinking about global movement. I want rounding and I want to drop this down, right? So you can have the global movement and the segmental wave that you are trying to create. Make mm -hmm. sense? Really great for your spine, really great for your shoulders, really great for your pelvis. Um, so anytime you do cat-cow, know that not only are you getting good spinal motion, but you're doing mobility for your shoulders, your pelvis, and your spine, which is awesome. <clears throat> okay, next. T-spine extension. So your thoracic spine extension. Okay. So there's two different ways to do this here. This first one on the left, I'm, I took the foam roller, I just butted it really against, I kind of um, got down on my back, knees bent, and then I took the foam roller and I just put it right um, just below my scapula. And then I checked because ideally you want this foam roller at about nipple line when you're laying down, okay? And you are just gonna lay back, but ideally when you have total flexibility, you, your butt's on the floor and your head's on the floor. Look at mine. Look at where my head is here. Let me get my drawings. Mm -hmm. So again, this is, this is nice for me to see. Okay. I've got some work to do because my head is not touching the ground here. So I've got restriction in my thoracic mobility because for healthy mobility, my butt should have no problems on the ground and my head should come back totally. Okay. So that's where you can hold this for, you know, 10, 15 seconds. Another way to do thoracic spine extension is more of an active movement. So <clears throat> you're going to put that foam roller and it, this, I mean, you're gonna use it where it feels good. You could probably start around the scapula or, and go to that nipple line, then you can work up. But <clears throat> this is where you're going to tuck your chin. Your elbows are going to come up like this. And then you're going to extend over that foam roller. Okay, I want you to tuck your chin because some people will just not even tuck their chin, they're doing this. They're not getting thoracic mobility in motion. We want you to get thoracic mobility. So that first one, I'm just up here, I got my chin tucked and that picture down below is where I'm actually bringing my thoracic spine into extension. So this is a motion versus this one, I'm just laying on that foam roller, okay? So I know if you've attended the foam rolling workshop, uh, or you've attended any of the using your at home tools for spinal hygiene, foam rollers have shown up as a great tool. Um, and it's only a great tool if you use it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but this would be a great, uh, I didn't even finish this this uh, sentence, but the foam roller is located at, the, at that nipple line if you're going straight through the sternum. Um, a foam roller is a great tool to have at the house in terms of doing specific soft tissue work, which is a component of flexibility and mobility, but also using it as a tool to get you into some posturing or exercises, okay? This one feels awesome. It feels really good. And again, when you see pictures of me, I, I'm challenging you to, you know, maybe have somebody take pictures of you and you can start to see, okay, this is where my mobility is. And these are my goals to get to, or even just going through and setting up and saying, oh, okay, as I do this motion, am I getting a lot of shifting happening in other places aside from where I want to focus on? And that gives you an idea of where your mobility is. Okay. Um, again, as you're sitting in that 90, 90 or that box um, step, if you feel like your legs aren't totally resting, your knees aren't on the ground, you can't get into the 90 for both legs, that is data for you to understand, okay, this is where I am. This is a starting point, okay? So this one is an active 
um, active uh, thoracic spine extension. I'm going into that extension and coming out of it, going into that extension and coming out of it, okay? Um, okay. And I think this last, this is the last one here. So this is ankle mobility. So really starting at spinal ranges of motion, always, always. And then we started at the shoulders, worked our way into the thoracic spine with extensions that we just got to, cat cow, which is shoulders, right? Ex spine, pelvis. Oh, we did the 90-90, so we got the hips. Now we're going into the ankle. So we're checking ankle mobility. So here I'm using a broom, but you can use anything. And I'm getting into that lunge posture. And I am just taking my knee into that lunge. I've got that uh, um, broom. Thank you. I, I actually have that a little bit I mean, you can gauge, does it need to be a little bit closer to your toes just to start to see, okay, where is my ankle mobility? How far forward feels good to go? But you're going to put it about one, two inches in front of the toe. And I would say not big toe, you want more middle towards the pinky, okay? I maybe, if you look at where I've got the uh, broom here, let me get my annotation. If you look at where I got the broom here, I'm looking right here. I'd probably move it to this spot here. Okay, I don't want it too close to the big toe. Because the reason being, as you move forward, I don't want you moving this way. Because as you move this way, it, it collapses your arches. You collapse into that posture. We don't want that. So I want you moving straight towards the broom. So you make sure you, the broom is positioned in the right spot and you're and you're tapping that broom. And once you tap the broom straight on, then you can do taps to the outside of the broom, okay? We just don't want that ankle collapsing. So we want the knee over the toe pushing towards the middle or pinky toe, and then you wanna go um, out. Again, we're working the ankle joint here. We are in shoes all the time. Our feet never very rarely touch natural surfaces. We're in shoes that are, are small toe boxes. So they're pointing or, you know, they're just um, squeezing our toes. So we're not able to grip like we used to, right? There's tons of receptors on the bottoms of our feet. Our, they're the foundation of our body. Uh, so um, I think in addition to the bottom of the feet, just having healthy mobility of your ankles is vital. Uh, and so don't wanna forget about, don't, don't forget about those guys down there, right? Um, and then just use that broom to just stabilize you, okay? Uh, okay. And again, I guess I would say, you just wanna make sure when you're lunging here, you wanna be, you don't wanna be opened up through your pelvis. So you don't wanna be rotating around, right? So as you're going forward, now going forward this way, I mean, you're, you're just really kind of watching how you're moving because you wanna stabilize the joint that you're working on. You're not working on a hip, you're not working on a knee, you're not working on a shoulder, you're working on the ankle. So we're focusing on how can you motion that ankle? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so where do you start? Let's say you just wanna get started with doing these types of motions and movements. Easy, just start with 10 reps a day. And I would, I mean, I would pick two or three of these. Say, oh, if you haven't done cat-cow, cat-cow is a great one, a really easy one to adjust into. You know, because you're getting the thoracic spine, you're getting your shoulders, you're getting your pelvis. And then maybe say, okay, I want to work on my shoulders or I want to work on my hips. Try the 90-90. Just pick two or three of these and just start doing 10 reps a day. If you want to improve, that's where you do three sets of 10 reps. It doesn't take a lot. Right? This is not, it doesn't require you to be in a gym or, you know, at home for an hour. Even I was just taking pictures. I'm like, oh, that felt amazing. And I, I didn't even do 10 reps of each of them, you know? 
Um, so if you want to just get started, st start with 10 reps a day and pick one or two or three of the ones we just went over today. Or if you want to enhance and really improve where you are, you got to increase it, right? So just start by gauging, okay, what is my baseline? And then you can start working on improving. Um, <clears throat> and if you work out, the question, I mean, I think sometimes people think, oh, I need to stretch before I work out. Um, I would say for a goal, mobility motion is better pre-workout. You're working on range of motion and movement, okay? Preparing those um, joints to take weight, do complex movements. Flexibility, that stretching, that's great post-workout. That static stretching, um, you just fatigued the muscles. So it's good to take those muscles and, and stretch them. So if you were picking and choosing, I would say do a mobility practice before you go out walking, before you go gardening, or before you're shoveling or vacuuming. Those household chore, chores, those things are working out. Shoveling is working out, okay? We potentially have 10 inches coming on Thursday, Wednesday to Thursday. Shoveling is working out. We need to prepare our body, body for that kind of workout, okay? Um, and then you want to stretch afterwards. Great things you can do, stretching, yoga, foam rolling, all of those things are working um, the body mobility-wise, flexibility-wise. Absolutely necessary. Uh, so my hope from this workshop is that you, you maybe start to choose two or three of these, you know, exercises that we presented and just start. See how you start to feel. These can be wonderful if you're in a static posture all day long. These are a nice postural interruption uh, to get motion into joints that absolutely need, need movement. Everywhere you got joints in your body, you've got high percentage of proprioceptive cells. Proprioception is your body or your brain understanding where your body is in space. Okay, so coordination, balance, me knowing my hands behind my back without seeing it. Okay, so when you think about people who are older and they get less balanced, they're walking and we're concerned about hip breaks, right? Everywhere there's a joint, you have proprioceptive cells. So tons on the bottom of the feet, tons in the knees, the hips, all along the spine, the most are right at the upper side of the spine. So when you do those mobility motions into those joints, you're improving brain input and how your brain understands where your body's in space and how things can move. Okay, so it enhances your brain. So thank you for being here. I would love to hear how uh, you're implementing this in your daily world. Next week, I believe we're talking about feet and your foundation. We touched on it a bit today, but I think that's a really important conversation that sometimes gets left out. And the last thing I will say is who do you know who can share what I have shared tonight? Who do you know in your world who has not been introduced to chiropractic and would be one of those people who said, yeah, nobody ever told me. What if, what if I would have known about this 10 years ago? Where could my life be? We want to enhance the, the lives in our community and we can't do it alone. So we support, uh, we appreciate your support and we appreciate you sharing uh, what you know. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for being here tonight and we'll see you next week. I always did the opposite. <clears throat> Flex, I always.